Hi everybody, this is Mrs. Campbell speaking and welcome to the podcast for topic 11, part 2, the part where you can use a calculator. So please make sure as you're going through this that you have a calculator handy. It's always a good idea to type along with me. So at the beginning today of this particular podcast, we are going to be um, just solving some equations without context. We'll eventually move into working into some context as well. Um, but let's just talk about kind of how do you solve each of these types of equations. So when you look at the first example, the first thing I would like to note here is that it is an exponential equation. I also note that the 3x minus 1, that's the exponent, does not apply to the 105. And since it doesn't, the first step I'd ask you to take would be to divide out the 105. So here goes. I'm going to divide that out. So dividing both sides by 105. And now I am grabbing my calculator. So 50, 50 divided by 105 is 48.095 and then some. So we get 2.3 to the 3x minus 1 equals 48. 0.095 and then there's some other digits. Now I will recommend that you do not do any rounding until you're all done. So um, I'm going to move into my next step and when I use that 48.095 I'm actually going to use the entire thing that's listed on my calculator. So here's the deal guys I want to solve for an exponent. So how do you solve for an exponent? Well, if you said logarithm, you'd be absolutely right because that's what logarithms are for. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to write it in log form, which means log. The base is always the thing that has an exponent. In this case, that's 2.3. So 2.3 of 48.095 is going to equal the exponent because that's what logs are for. And then, you know, I'm not going to do anything else except punch some things on my calculator, but let me share with you what I'm going to type. Now, it depends on the kind of calculator you have, of course. If you're working with a TI-84 graphing calculator, then you can go right to the log button where you're allowed to change base. That's in the math menu, and it's pretty far down there. So if you just hit the math menu and then scroll down, you'll eventually see log, and you can type that in if you like. Um, I am currently working with a TI-83, and I don't have that button. So what I'm going to be doing is to change a base formula. Now, I'm going to write this just for this one question. I probably won't write it again. The change of base formula says take the log of 48.095 and divide it by the log of 2.3. Now, I changed the base to base 10 logarithms because I have a button for that on my calculator. I could just as easily have changed it to base E or really any other base, but I would choose one that I had a button for. So on my calculator, that's all I've got. So now I'm going to be typing on my calculator. I'm going to type log answer, which is second negative. Be sure to close the parentheses and then divide it by log 2.3. And again, if you're working with an 84, then you're just going to type that in with that one button. It's kind of a magic little button. Um, but again, use the answer. Use the whole thing, not just the 0, 095. All right, when I hit enter, I get, and hopefully you do too, 4.65018 right? Now I'm going to, that's what 3x minus 1 equals. So the next thing I'm going to do is add 1. So I just did plus 1 and hit enter and then divide by 3. I'm not showing that work because, guys, we're in pre-calc. I think we know how to do that. And uh, in the end, I get 1.88 as my answer. So x equals 1.88. Hopefully that worked out well for you. All right, moving on. Question number 2 is also an exponential equation, but it's a little different. Um, and it's a little different simply because it has e in it. However, that does not make it harder. In fact, it makes it easier. Let's talk about why. First thing I'm going to ask, the negative x plus 4 is the exponent. Does it apply to the 24? You're right, it does not. So we're going to get rid of that 24 first. We'll divide both sides by that. And to do that, I'll be picking up my handy-dandy calculator. And when I do, I get 2.375. And now, just like the previous question, I'm going to go ahead and write this into log form. So I'm going to write log because I want to solve for the exponent. So log base, well, whatever has an exponent as a base, that's e this time, of 2.375 is equal to negative x plus 4. 
Now, here's why I think this question's easier. So if you go back to the previous question, remember I had to change bases to get here, or I had to go dig through a big old menu to find where that log button is. I don't have to do that here because LN, log base E, that is the same as LN, and that's on every calculator. So, and it's not even buried, it's right on the home, on the home buttons. So all I have to do is press LN, and then 2.375, do that with me guys, make sure you know how you're typing, and that will give me the 0.864997 and more. I don't have to do anything but just hit the LN button. So since E as a, with an exponent ends up being used a lot, log base E ends up being used a lot. And so now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take my result and I'm gonna subtract four, because I gotta solve this linear equation now. So subtract four and then divide by negative one Check it out. Did you get the same answer that I have? I have x equals 3.135. And that will do it. Now, just a note, you can always check your answer by going back to that question and plugging it back in for x and seeing if it works. I won't be doing that in the podcast, but you're sure welcome to do that when you're taking your test. Now, I'm going to move on to question number three, which you'll see is not an exponential equation. So really, one and two, that kind of encompasses everything that exponential equations can do. Question three is a logarithm equation. And so I'm going to be using some properties of logarithms to do this one, the first of which um, is the sum of two logs with the same base can be written as a single log. I'm going to do that here. So this would become the log base three of x times x minus 8, and that equals 2. So where do I go from there? Well, let me just take you back a step. Remember back in question number 2 and also in question number 1, when we wanted to solve for an exponent, we wrote it in its equivalent form as a logarithm. Well, I want to undo a logarithm here, so I'm going to write it in exponential form. Gosh, we do that all the time. We go back and forth between the two. So this will become the base 3 to the power of 2, that's this base and this power over here, is going to equal x times x minus 8. And now it's not a logarithm problem anymore. Now it's just a regular equation. So what do I do next? Well, I'm thinking I'm going to square the 3 for sure. And my gut's telling me I should distribute these x's over here. So x squared minus 8x it is. And then I think, gosh, I think that's a quadratic. So let's get everything on one side. 0 equals x squared minus 8x minus 9. And from here, my choices would be to either factor or use a quadratic formula. Guys, this one factors. A factor is pretty easy, in fact. So I'm definitely going to go that route. So x and x will get me the x squared. 9 and 1 will get me the 9. And 1 positive, 1 negative. I'm going to take that 9 and make that negative. And the 1 positive, and the reason I'm doing that is because my inside of negative 9x and outside of positive 1x combines to be the negative 8 I need. So in the end, x is 9, x is negative 1. But wait, we got to be a little bit careful when we're working with logarithms because we know we cannot do logs of negative numbers. So the 9, if I put it in this first part, is no problem. Put it in the second part, 9 minus 8, that's positive, that's no problem. So x equals 9 is an answer. But negative 1, when you put it in this first one, boy, that's taking the log of a negative, and you can't do that. So cross it off. That one will reject. It's an extraneous solution. x equals 9 is the only solution. All right, so there's a couple equations. I suspect there's more coming up. Let's see what we've got here. Oh, one more for sure. Um, then it looks like some word problems. So let's take a look at question number 4, also a logarithm problem. This one, however, a little different, and I'll tell you why as I look at it. The first one I had um, a log on one side but not on the other. This one's got logs like all over the place. So I'm just going to start working with some of the properties I have here. Um, I have a subtraction. I'll have to do something with that. I have a 3 and a 4 thirds out in front. I'm going to do something with that. Actually, I'm going to start with that. That 3 is going to become a power on the x. The 4 thirds is going to become a power on the 8. So I'm going to end up with ln of x cubed. And after the side, I just want to think about this for a second. I'm going to end up with 8 to the 4 thirds. That is the same thing as the cube root of 8 to the 4th. Well, the cube root of 8 is 2, and 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. Pretty sure that's 16. So this will become 
minus ln of 16. So I kind of skipped a step and did a little work off to the side. 8 to the 4 thirds is 16. And then on the right-hand side, ln of 6. Next up, there's a minus. So what do we do when we have a minus? Well, let's write it as a single log where the top is x cubed and the bottom is 16. And that's going to equal the natural log of 6. And then, because I have logs on both sides, that's what makes this question different than problem number 3. In question number 4 here, I can just look inside, and I see these insides. I'm going to set them equal to each other. So x cubed over 16 is the same as 6, which means x cubed is the same as 16 times 6, which, darn it, I typed that wrong, is 96. And then I have to undo the cube by taking a cube root. So I'm going to take the cube root. And I get four point, about 4.58. Now I say don't round until the end. And folks, this is the end. So 4.58 it is. And done. So again, all those properties of exponents that we learned early on in the unit, and then in this case it's called the one-to-one -one property or the looking inside rule, um, helps us out. Now the next bunch of questions that we have involve working with word problems. So for each of them, I'm going to read the word problem. I'm going to choose the appropriate formula, figure out what it, which variable I'm trying to find, um, and then solve it. So here goes. First one, Adriana ingests, ingests 40 milligrams of a medication at noon. At 8 p.m., she has 6 milligrams remaining in her bloodstream. What is the half-life of this medication? Take it right here, guys. Half-life. Half-life is what we're trying to find. That means I'm going to need this equation right here, the half-life equation. And I actually am going to try to find the half-life, which means I'll be looking for H. So let's start to fill in some of the other things. I always like to start with what was the initial value. The initial value here was 40. That's how much she ingested. So that's A. And then it's 1 half to the T over H. T is time passed. And we started this thing at noon, and then it was 8 p.m. That's 8 hours. And half-life is the I don't know. So I'm going to write 8 over A, H. And at that time, after all that time, well, there's only 6 milligrams remaining. Now, sometimes you need logarithms and sometimes you don't. And one of the skills that we need is one that's going to tell us when we need them and when we don't. So when I glance at this one, I look for where the variable is. And it's in the exponent, which means I need a logarithm. But before I can even do that, this 8 over h on the right-hand side does not apply to the 40. So step one, I am dividing both sides by 40. And so the left-hand side will give me 6 divided by 40, which is 0.15. The right-hand side is going to be 1 half, which actually I'm going to write as 0.5 because it's a little easier to write and type. And then it's to the 8 over h. Now here goes for logarithms. Log base. Now one of the problems that people come up with is, wait, which one's the base? The base is whatever number has the exponent on it. And the one that has the exponent is the 0.5, so that's going to be the base of the 0.15 is going to give me 8 over h, h being the thing I'm trying to find. I'm going to pick up my calculator right now and I'm going to type the left hand side. So 84 users, you know where to go on that one. 83 users, I'm typing log 0.15, close those parentheses, divided by log 0.5. And I get 2.74, whatever, dot, dot, dot. There's a whole bunch of stuff here. And that's equal to 8 over h. Now, here's sort of the trick that's kind of weird about this one. What I'm trying to solve for right now is in the bottom of a fraction. I'm not thrilled by that. So what I'm going to do is multiply both sides by h. So I'm going to write 2.74 multiplied by h equals 8. When you multiply the right-hand side by h, it cancels it out. And then I'm going to divide by 2.74. So a couple of steps to get that h by itself. Now, I said I'm going to divide by 2.74, but I also said don't round until the end. So I'm not actually going to divide by that. I'm going to divide by 2.73696594. Easiest way for me to do that is to say 8 divided by answer, which is second negative, 
or 84 users, you can just hit the up arrow and grab that number and pull it on down. And in the end, 2.92, and it's going to be in hours, is the half-life. So just about every three hours, half of the medication um, is gone. All right, let's move on to question number six. Question number six, it says a sample of yeast grows continuously so that after seven hours you have five times the amount you begin with. What is the constant of growth K? Now, you probably got a little excited right away. I know I did when I saw the word continuously. So right away, I know it's going to be one of the ones that has an E in it. Then it actually asked me about K, and only one of the equations up top has a K in it. That's the one it is. So that's the equation I'm going to use, and I'm trying to figure out what k is so that means i have to know everything else only i really don't because all it says here is a sample of yeast that could be any size sample any size at all i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to start with the sample of yeast with just one so i can pick that to be anything i want here's the deal whatever i pick here when i do it after seven hours i'm going to have five times that amount so if this is a one this is going to be a 5. If that were a 10, this would be a 50. If this were a 7, this would be a 35. Whatever I put on the left-hand side just has to be 5 times whatever I start with. And then it's e to the k, which of course is the thing I don't know, times t, and t, or x, I guess, is at 7. Now, do I need logarithms here? Of course I do. The thing I'm trying to find is k, and k is in the exponent. Uh, does this k times 7 apply to the 1? It doesn't. Divide it out, which actually just makes it go away. There's no one here anymore. One times anything is just that thing. Anyway, so now log time. Log base what? Well, what has an exponent is the e, so it's log base e of 5 equals k times 7. And again, I like the log base e because I have a button for that. I don't have to go into any menus. I don't have to do anything more than just type. So I'm hitting the ln button on my calculator and then the 5 and I'm going to press enter, I get 1.609, and then I'm going to divide that by 7 to get a k value of 0.2299. And done with that one. All right, that's page 2. On to page 3. Now, page 3 is going to be more word problems, and I'm going to actually lose the ones I've got written up there, so we'll have to go from memory, see if I can. All right, so the next one says, how much would you have to invest in an account at 3.1% annual interest to have $1,400 in two years if interest is compounded monthly and then continuously? Guys, this is a twofer. So we get a two for one here. One question, two parts. Monthly, well, as soon as you set an amount of a time period, then you have to know that you're gonna be using this equation y equals, I don't have it in front of me anymore, but it's a times 1 plus r over n to the n x power, where a is the initial amount and r is the interest rate, and n is how many times per year. It's monthly, so that'll be 12, and x is the number of years, and it's going to be 2 in this case. So here's what I want to know. I want to know how much you'd have to invest. That means i got to know what a is. So I'm going to have to know what Y is. Well, here's what I want. I want $1,400 at the end of that time. I don't know what A is. That's what I want. Then 1 plus 3.1% is 0 0.031. Number of times per year is 12. Number of years times the number of times per year is 12 times 2. As it turns out, guys, this whole thing right here is nothing more than a number. I'm just going to figure out what that number is. So I'm going to my calculator again, and I'm going to type it with parentheses. I'm going to type it really just like it looks. So I'll type in a left parentheses, 1 plus 0 0.031 divide 12, close the parentheses, to the, now you could just multiply the 12 and 2 together and just do 24, or if you didn't know what the number was, you'd have to have parentheses again, TI-83 users. Um, so I'm just going to put a 24 in here. And I get 1.06 and so on. 3, 8, 7, 7. There's a whole bunch of numbers here. I'll just say dot, dot, dot. And then how do you get the A by itself? Well, of course, you divide both sides by whatever that number is. So going to my calculator now, 
1400 is being divided by that last number I had. So I just typed it as the answer. You can reach up and grab it, whichever works for you. And it looks like 1315 94 is the value of A. So in other words, if you put $1,315.94 into an account, and two years later, you're going to have $1,400. So they're giving you some interest. That's the whole idea there. Continuously is a little bit different. And again, let me just say a little bit easier. Why is it easier? Well, check it out. If I set this one up, as soon as you see the word continuously, you got to know it's Y equals A e to the rx. It's a less complicated looking formula, even though you might not be a big fan of this whole e thing. Um, that's just way easier to work with. So I still want the same thing though, guys. I still want $1,400. I still don't know what a is. I do know that e is just a number, that the rate is 0 0.031, and the number of years is 2. Though nothing changed here, I also know, and so do you, that this thing right here, that's just a number. Now, I didn't ask the question before. I probably should have. Do I need a logarithm here? And the answer is definitely not. I don't need a logarithm because I'm not trying to find an exponent. All I need to do is figure out what this number in the red box is divided from both sides. So again, grabbing my calculator, I'm doing e to the 0 0.031 times 2, and I get 1,400 equals a times 1.06396 dot dot dot. I'll do 1400 now divided by that number, that whole number, not just the decimal, and I'll get 13, 15, and 84 cents when you're on to the nearest penny. So notice that, guys, because of the continuous. You don't need to invest as much money, 10 cents less, in fact, um, to get the same amount of money after two years. All right, one question remaining of this type, and then we're going to go on to one other question on our last page. So question number eight says, the revenue at Sears department stores has been declining over the years. In fact, many Sears stores have actually closed. In 2005, the revenue was $49.46 billion, and in 2017, the revenue was only $16.7. That's a big jump, guys. Um, what is the annual rate of decrease for revenue for Sears? Now, when it says rate, right away, I know, and I'm going to go for that very first equation, and because it's decreasing, I'll be using this. A times 1 minus R to the X power. So let's see, how much do we have, how many, much money do we have in 2005, which was the earliest year? Um, that was 49.46 billion. I'm not going to write the billion. And R is what I'm trying to find. So let's see, we went from 2005 to 2017. I think that's 12 years. So this can have an exponent of 12. And then at that time, we only had $16.7 billion in revenue in that year. So how much is it decreasing? Gosh, it looks like a lot, doesn't it? So first question, does the 12 apply to the 49.46? Yeah, I'm asking that question again. The answer is no. Again, let's get rid of it. 49.46, both sides. That'll clear out of here. Going to my calculator, and I hope you're typing with me again. That's good skill. Uh, 49.46. Then I get on the left 0.3376 and a whole bunch more. That's equal to 1 minus r to the 12th power. Now, some people might want to get rid of the 1, but you can't because it's inside the parentheses. What you have to do is get rid of the 12. So I'm going to take the 12th root of both sides. And when I do, I'm typing it again. And you go into the math menu and you can grab that that um, button that says x the root and put in a 12. I just raised both sides to the 1 12th power, which is the same thing. And I get 0.9135. And that's what 1 minus r is. So where do I go next? Keep in mind, I'm trying to figure out what 1 is, right? Excuse me, what r is. So because the r on the right-hand side is negative, I'm going to add it to both sides, putting r on the left-hand side. That's positive. And then I'm going to get rid of the 0.9135 by subtracting that from both sides, and I'll have this. 
and more because there's more digits there. So then I'll just go one minus that number and I get an R value of 0 0.0865. And I want to go four digits here so that I can write this as a percentage. So it looks like 8.65% per year. Now, a little factoid for you guys. This is actual data. I just happened to look this up today. Um, found that to be kind of interesting. Over the Sears store, of course, ours in Eau Claire is all closed already. Um, but they're de decreasing in revenue by almost, you know, eight and, well, eight and a half, more than eight and a half percent every year. Every year. And that was all the way through 2017. Don't know what is going on with them today in 2020. All right, moving on. One question remaining. And, of course, it has to do with this logistic graph modeling. Um, again, this is data, by the way, that I looked up today. So it is a factual information. Here's what it says. The number of bison in Custer State Park in South Dakota can be modeled by the equation below for X in years after 2000. So they got this fancy-looking equation. First question said, what's the carrying capacity for bison in this park? And it's really asking the question, like, how many can be sustained living in that park? And the answer to that would be whatever the number is in the numerator. So 2,500. And 89. That's called the carrying capacity. So it's going to sort of level out over time to reach about that many. The second question said, how many bison would you expect in 2020? So in 2020, that's this year. Here's what we know. X is years after 2000. So X here is going to be 20 years after the year 2000. So all I have to do is take that 20 and put it into this x value and get my number. Now, I say that's all you have to do, but you know, that's a pretty complex looking equation. It's not always that easy to type. So I'm going to tell you how I type it. You don't have to do it this way. You can type it all at once if you want. I kind of like just to do the bottom of it first. So on my calculator, I'm going to type 1 plus 1.59. Then I'm going to hit my e to the button. And, um, and again, for 83 users, you get a parentheses. Um, you'll have to type that. Well, you don't have to type it in. It's there. So negative 0 0.02. Oh, gosh. I put a circle through mine. 32, I think it was. 0232, I hope it is. Um, times 20. Because that's what we're replacing x with. And I'm going to close those parentheses and press enter. And I ended up with a number really close to 2. 1.99973 and so on. And now I'm going to take that 2589 that's in the numerator and divide it by that number in the denominator. And it looks like we'd expect about 1,294.67. We're talking about bison here. So I think we'll just round that to a whole number. About 1,295 bison in Custer State Park. All right, that takes us to the end of this second podcast, the part where you can use a calculator. And I hope you did that along with me and use your calculator. Good luck on your test, everybody.